<laughs> In an industrial zone near the sports stadiums lies the Philadelphia Regional Produce Market a central hub for produce distribution in the area. That's cool. Are you talking about anyone to a private school? What's that? Or grannies? Or grannies or bitter rabbits. Has a Odds are, if you live near Philly, you've shopped at a market or eaten at a restaurant that buys their fruits and vegetables here. All right. Yeah. If I'm going to help him, you better not be taking to one of my customers. Exactly. If somebody does that, they're done. Food distribution can easily become an impersonal, faceless business. You had small family-owned farms. It was his name was on that box, and it would meant everything to him. Today, everything is about numbers. You probably don't know the people who help bring food to your plate. In this movie, I will try to put a face on produce. Built in 1959 and open 24 hours a day, you can come to the market any time of night to fix your craving for a 50-pound bag of hazelnuts. That shelf has over 1,000 pounds of onions. These vegetables don't deliver themselves. There are human faces behind these boxes. Some of the faces here are old. We all grew up together down here. And a lot, not all of us, but a lot of us, our fathers or our grandfathers were in the business. My grandfather came from, came from Italy and got in and started with a horse and wagon. Uh, you know, over 80 years ago. And we've been, you know, it, it's just a generation to generation. In my particular case, my, my great uncle had a, a distribution point just like this in Rome. I've been doing this for 40 years, and I don't like getting up in the morning. I've been doing this type of job since I was seven years old, I'm 45. Love it. And some of the faces here are new. Because there's more ethnic people coming into the country. Sure. Getting involved in produce. You know, anybody you know, could come here and buy and go out and sell, but nobody takes nobody takes the advantage of it other than the the the, the immigrants and yeah. a lot of Indians now were uh, a few years ago you didn't see the Indian people in it. Yeah. Pakistanis, Iraqis, uh, uh, Palestinians, sure. Uh, Chinese, big big influx of Chinese into it, Koreans. I used to go to the Italian festival, I ain't Italian no more. How many years you guys been, how many years you been buying from him? After I came here, I know him, like five years. Right on, right on. I've been here five years. How many years you been here for? 30, 32. Oh. <laughs> he was in Italian market. He was in a diaper in Africa back then. <laughs> it's not surprising that more immigrants are involved in the produce trade. Since the market's opening, America's immigrant population has rapidly increased. In 1959, 5.4% of people in America were born in a different country. By 2005, that number had risen to 12.1%. I live in West Philly, and no matter the weather, when I bike home from school, I pass several food trucks where immigrants sell the produce they purchase in the regional market in the morning. I spoke to two of these immigrants, Kevin and Solomon, to better understand why this job attracted them. When anybody come here from different places, they, they, don't, they don't have an, any chance to do some another job, like a profession job or another place to job, because they ask you a lot of papers, uh, a lot of kind of uh, profession. When you come here, if you have a little bit money, you know, you start this, this job, that's easier. Not only this one, some people they sell fishes, some people they sell flowers, different. Sometimes I do think about it like, you know, this don't really need a college degree, you know, it's just like common sense to do this. Yeah, I, I, I learned this doing it from my brother, my brother because he, he was here and uh, he had the experience like seven years, he teach me. Oh, you gotta put a lot of time because my day start like 1.30, 1.45 in the morning. I, I, I don't like going to the market around uh, 4 o'clock in the morning because it's too early for me. You see, where we're from is like we do the same thing. Most of us do the same thing back home. Uh, from 1.30 to 
to like 6 in the evening. That's a lot of hours. It's a long day. Yeah, a long day. I went back to the market to ask people why they thought this job appealed to immigrants, and they mentioned many of the same factors described by Kevin and Solomon. Most of them are not educated, and this is easy enough for them to do. You buy a case of letters for five dollars, you don't have to know anything but to sell it for six, or seven or eight. I think it's easy for these guys to uh, come down here, buy cash, sell cash. It's one of the few businesses that you can turn your money over quick. Buy it today, sell it today, and you know, it's not a big investment. They need this every day, food, so it's going to continue. They're just learning the language. They, you know, uh, uh, their families bring them into it. There's, a, you know, there's Koreans that, you know, are here for years that bring them in and then show them how to do it. You know, people need what we have. Of course, if there are job openings for immigrants, this means many native-born Americans are rejecting this work. American people don't want to work. That's basically it. I hate to say this, they're lazy. Yeah, American people, they, they don't want to work hard, you know? A lot of white people want to do things easy. Who wants to get up 12 o'clock at night to go to work? A lot of the uh, people that come from different countries, you know, they want to bust their home and make a living. I can understand why someone would come to that conclusion. I've been down here 19 years and it takes a toll on your knees and your feet. Beat you up after a while. The hardest part of my job, and mostly everybody else here, is to get up at midnight. It's hard work, the hours suck, we're underpaid. It's kind of hard if you have another option. You see this? If you have another option, you would probably take it. Fucking purgatory down here is the truth, so. But there's another reason fewer native-born Americans work at this market. Native-born Americans are better educated than ever before. In 1950, less than 40% of Americans older than 25 were high school graduates. However, at the beginning of the millennium, more than 80% of Americans above age 25 had a high school degree. This means a lot of kids have job opportunities their parents and grandparents never enjoyed. At one time, there was a lot of Italians in this business, and they worked very hard, and they were successful. But their children didn't continue it because they found other ways to make a living in life that wasn't as hard. I have two daughters. They both want to go to college and do other things. I say, I have a business for you. You make a better living than what you can now. And they don't want to wake up in the middle of the night and come home aggravated with the all the stress of a business. You know, take my son, you know, my son, he's, he's 21 years old. Do you think he would get up at 1, 2 in the morning, load a truck? And, you know, it's just a whole different, it's a whole different society. Well, the only reason I'm here is because I'm not educated. That's the only reason. As you become more successful, they became doctors, lawyers, whatever, and went into different businesses. The spread of education in America has changed expectations. I don't think I would want my kids doing this. It's a tough job. It's a tough job to do. You gotta move, you gotta work hard. Would you tell your kids to do the work that you do? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Getting up early in the morning, long hours, cold, heat, going from one temperature to another. Do you have kids? Yes. If they said to you, I want to work down here, what would you tell them? I'd tell them no. Usually you think about children doing a better job, you know, more, uh, more money, more uh, satisfaction. What does your son do? Goes to, goes to college. If your kids, if they th wanted to work down here, would you recommend it? What do you absolutely do? not. No, absolutely. It's dying. Terminal market is yeah. dying. You don't, want to tell, you, don't want, you don't want your boss there. <laughs> I tell them to go back to school, get a good education, maybe do what you're doing. I don't think I would want him to get into this business. It's, it's tough. It's real tough. Many industries have come to rely on immigrant labor, in part because native-born Americans no longer view these jobs as successful, and more importantly, because education has given them the opportunity to do something else. 45% of American workers without a high school degree are immigrants. This means immigrants are well represented in certain industries. 
Immigrant workers make up the majority of the labor force in the U.S. meat and poultry industry. Half of the workers in agriculture in the United States are immigrants. To someone from rural Mexico, picking oranges or selling fruit out of a truck might be viewed as a successful job, work that gives them enough cash to also send money home. But to a native-born American who dropped out of high school, these sorts of jobs are often considered proof of personal failure. Of course, human faces aren't the only faces at the market. Packaging is one way for large corporations to put a pleasant face on the globalized marketplace. If you eat Four Rivers potatoes, you too can look like Jose Canseco. Young Andy must have worked hard. How proud his parents must be. Did we have child labor laws in 1927? Those sweet potatoes are just too giddy. What are they plotting? This Mandarin is actually trying to seduce me. These boxes do more than amuse. They also teach us about American mythology. They remind us that the independent farmer is one of America's classic heroes, which makes this image particularly ironic since the bulk size produce sold at this market can only be produced by large corporations that are reliant on migrant labor. This market offers great opportunities. It provides many people with employment and it supplies us with low priced produce. It offers a modern version of a classic American story. Not the tale though of the self-sufficient American farmer it's a different American story. A story of tremendous opportunity that only comes at great cost. Yep. That was in Rocky One. What? That was in Rocky One. Are you joking? Really? You go watch Rocky One. Yeah, I've seen Rocky One. Remember when he walks the little girl home off the corner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Marie, your brother know you're out this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's me. Really? I say to him, here he is, here's the tough guy.